Hi, it's Dr. Scott McLean, and this is a presentation about the Hemi Disc Flap. That uh, I'm sure someone else did this before, but this is something I also came up with. So I start with a two millimeter twist drill without doing any flap whatsoever. And I use a template that I fabricated in DTX Implant Studio. And I'm going through with my two millimeter twist drill very slow. So I don't have to use water if I have a very, very sharp drill. So a brand new drill, nice and sharp, go through. I'm going at about uh, 50, so not very much at all. I can take it out and feel the drill. There's no heat at all, so it's very, very low heat. So I'm taking my time and going in and uh, prepping the osteotomy. I'm just going to take it down to about 8.5, and then I'll actually start to do uh, my disc cutting. So I'm going to do a hemi disc cut. So I'll flap the buckle flap and then I'll cut the disc out of the lingual flap. That way I'll maintain the keratinized tissue on the flap where I need it, on the buckle. This is where it's typically thinner. So once we get the two millimeter twist drill down, we're going to stop here and then just assess uh, the situation. So we'll remove the two millimeter twist drill. We'll go in and have a look and you can see all I have is the osteotomy through the tissue, so I haven't punched anything at this point. But I'll take a 15 scalpel blade, I'm going to cut it, make an incision right through the osteotomy. And you can see I'm going to cut it in half. And when I cut it in half, I'm going to flap just the buccal aspect of the tissue so I can maintain that soft tissue. So I'll use a molt elevator. I bought this from Salvin. Many different places have them. But the molt is a very effective way for you to elevate this without tearing. And this is a fantastic tool. So as we lift this back, we'll lift it up. We can see the bone. But I'm not going to lift the lingual. So you don't touch the lingual. And this is going to prepare the patient for better healing and also better adaptation of the tissue around your new implant. So we're going to use a, a hole cutter from Novo BioCare. So it's going to prepare the osteotomy access. So we'll put the disc in. This is a five millimeter uh, disc for doing a punch access. And we're not going to punch the facial. So it's very important to understand that. We're going to punch the lingual. Therefore, it's going to keep it out of the way when we're doing our guided surgery. And then we'll also be able to have that tissue very well adapted during the healing process, which is kind of key to this type of protocol. So we'll lift the buccal tissue out of the way, and we'll have this so that we can come in with the disc cutter, and this will punch the tissue and cut just the lingual aspect. So we're doing a hemi-disc flap. So we're going to just punch that lingual, and we'll hold the buccal out of the way, and get that little piece of tissue out of the area. So we start it, go a very slow revolution. You don't have to hold it too long. We have to wiggle it a little bit because it is kind of an ovoid shaped ridge. And then we can come back in and we'll cut away that piece of tissue. We're actually uh, remove it by using a mold elevator. So we'll use the smaller end, the two millimeter end, I believe this is. And uh, we'll take the punch out which is guiding the punch saw. And then we can take this and then elevate that piece of tissue and get it out of the way. Now our goal is to be very atraumatic during the implant insertion. And you also use the new Thai Ultra Implant with a zeal abutment to maintain good soft tissue in this area for muco integration. So you can see the patient's a little bit of a bleeder, not too bad, but uh, anyway, we're cutting away the, the, the disc so there's the hemi disc that's raised out of position so that's all the keratinized tissue that we're kind of wasting here so rather than punching the whole disc i think it's wise to kind of keep that disc on the facial that half so that we can bulk the tissue on the facial aspect for soft tissue seal especially in the platform shifted area of the implant so there you can see the two millimeter osteotomy and then the disc is now cut on the lingual, which will make a beautiful shape for when we place the implant through the guided uh, template. So this template has been fabricated using DTX Implant Studio. We've planned the implant so it's going to be avoiding the nerve. So it's super safe, very accurate position to get this implant. 
so that we can get an ideal position for doing restorative. So I'm going to use the uh, next drill, which is going to be the 2.4, 2.8 drill. So we can test this to make sure it fits, but this gives us the depth and angulation for the implant to go in, and then we get to the level of the 10 millimeters. So we can add tens. This is actually drilling 20 millimeters from the top of that sleeve and uh, from that drill guide. So when the drill guide, it goes in, it's all metal, so we're not drilling plastic and having plastic go down into the osteotomy, which is important because some of these plastic templates are actually bringing plastic into the bone and we don't want to do that. So as we drill, we're going very slow. We're doing this at about 50 RPM. Uh, I used to drill at about 800 and I switched to a very slower uh, kind of RPM, but also using very, very sharp drills. So doing so, we're cutting the bone and you actually can keep the bone on the drill much better this way. So as I pull the drill out, you'll see on these larger drills, the bone is staying on the drill. So if you need to harvest that at all, it's a great way to harvest because when we're using a lot of rinsing and washing, the bone is actually being burnt. Then number two, the bone is uh, at the level where we can't get it because it go, has gone up in the suction. So you can use the suction retrieval, but that's a little kind of disgusting to me because the drill and the saliva and everything is going at such a speed that you're getting a lot of contamination into the graft area. So here you can see I'm going down, I'm at about uh, getting down around eight and a half, get down to 10. So we're going very slow, but now it's cutting on the lateral walls and this makes the drilling easy. So the two millimeters, sometimes you have to use some water and go down with that because it takes a little bit more time, but lateral cutting with the sharp drills is actually quite easy and uh, does an effective job. So look at the bone on the drill itself. It collects it very nicely. So we're able to harvest that if we wanted to and put it back into the osteotomy. So we go through a series of drills now and uh, just get the osteotomy prepped. Using the protocol for, this is medium bone. We can see the cortex is uh, you know, not too thick here, but we are getting down. If I showed you the plan, we are actually in between two cortical plates. So this is working quite nicely because of the guided surgery. We go back and forth and get this in, so I'm not really going at such a high pace to generate any heat at all, so it's quite nice. So you can see I don't have to even use the water in this uh, situation. And new drilling protocols are coming for new implants that are coming out in the new year, and I can't wait to see those, but I've slowed my drilling down quite a bit to kind of keep the heat down and keep things vital. It's all about having great surfaces on vital bone and this makes it work. So you look at the bone that's being collected just by doing this type of protocol. So we'll take the implant. We're going to use a Nobel Parallel CC implant, which is a tie ultra implant. So when we take this out, we can attach the uh, carrier and this is going to guide the implant in through the sleeve or the, of the drill guide. So as we take this out, we can see that the implant is a parallel type of implant. And it has a gold surface. So this gold is actually anodized titanium. It's not gold, but you can see it's an anodization procedure. And then there's this surface kind of uh, technology that makes this implant very, very hydrophilic. So they have this coating on the outside, which is a secret coating. It's um, very kind of unique, and it makes the hydrophilic nature of the implant so it grabs blood very quickly. Sometimes it just rushes up the side of that implant really like crazy. Mm -hmm. So as we put this into position, we'll guide the implant in. So we're getting lots of blood all over the implant when we're putting it in because the blood is loving it because of the hydrophilic nature of that surface. So the surface has also some unique properties that we'll look at in a second. But that implant goes in quite slick. It stops at the top of the ring, which tells me I'm at the correct ang angulation and depth for the implant to be restored because we want proper emergence profile, position of the implant so we don't get a food trap around this implant. And so often people are getting food traps around their implants. So as we come back in, we can check that the implant is looking quite nice. It's exactly where we want it to be uh, on our plan. We're actually just a little tiny bit below the bone and uh, so this is looking good. And we can torque test this now. You want to torque test with the template out of the mouth so we can see that this torque wrench goes up to 70 newtons. 
So when we torque test this, we're getting this at uh, about 40 newtons, which is right on par for where this implant should be. So nice and tight, but not too tight because we don't want the bone to have any bone necrosis. Then we'll use a CC bone mill. So this has uh, got a guide and then a, a mill that is kind of flared out. So this allows you to place your abutments without having any kind of bone inhibiting the abutment itself. So we'll put the, the guide on and we use a CC bone mill on every CC implant that we place just to make sure that the prosthetics are going to be positioned exactly where they should be and uh, not to worry about that. So as we do this, we're going to come in with the bone mill itself at a higher RPM. You can go slow like we're showing here, but you want to go higher. So this is advanced surface technology as far as I'm concerned. So we have a zeal abutment going in a tie ultra implant. And when these two come together, you're using different surfaces at different levels of the implant. So the zeal abutment has a specialized type of surface that's good for soft tissue. And then the tie ultra implant has a number of surfaces. So this muco integration occurs between the zeal abutment and the top of the implant. And then the bone is going to be enhanced at that top as aspect in this uh, anodized gold area. And as we go down the implant, it's minimally rough and it gets down into an area that's gradually changing in topography. So it gets moderately rough and then gets into low to high pore density. So this is really perfect for osseo integration in the bone. And then we can see the soft tissue integration, which is called muco integration. So it's in an area of the implant collar which makes it so that it's going to be less plaque retentive, also very hydrophilic for the implant placement. So the zeal abutment is specialized for the tissue. The tire ultra implant integrates from the tissue into the bone and then is reacting to the different levels of the bone. So watch this as we see the hydrophilic nature of this implant. It's going up the surface so tremendously fast. And this is what I'm seeing actually in the body. Sometimes you'll touch the blood just on your, on your way in and it's just going up the side. So this is the zeal abutment that I use. You can see that it's a 1.75. This is the one I like to use. I don't uh, use the uh, larger one. And then I'll use the latch driver, which has a black ring around it. You can see the reference number here. So when you go over top of the abutment, you actually are placing it with the little plastic driver, but you'll come back and you'll use the latch driver to make sure that this uh, abutment is in place. Now the wonderful thing about this abutment is when you place it, it's securing the connective tissue around the platform shift of the implant. And this is critical, I believe, for long-term success of the implant because what happens is we want to have that area sealed at the time of surgery. So this is a sterile abutment going on a sterile implant and you never go back down to this area unless you have a problem or unless you need to change the abutment. So it's really an area that you're kind of staying out of. And we're going to place a iOS scannable abutment on top of this so it makes it a beautiful system because we're never going back into the connective tissue zone. We're going to stay in the junctional epithelium which is a much safer place to stay when you're trying to preserve the bone around the uh, top of the implant. So as we tighten this down we're going to tighten it to 35 newton centimeters. You can see the abutments now in place and it looks very secure. So we'll take the iOS on one healing abutment. And this is also a scannable abutment. So it's called a healing cap. And when we place this in position, you can, uh, the surgeon will place this at the time of the implant placement. So you're gonna put this in position and just kind of tighten it down with your fingers. And once this is in position, you could technically scan the implant crown at the time of that surgical appointment. I usually wait and have the patient come back and make sure that everything is good. But uh, we would certainly want to wait and fabricate the crown, I believe, later on because I don't want to have this loaded. And so having this in place means that you don't have to have a uh, impression coping. So the doctor restoring this does not have to purchase an impression coping. They scan over top of this abutment with their intraoral scanner and send it to the lab and the lab can then start to fabricate the ideal crown for the system. So you're never going back down to the implant level, you're going to be staying in the tissue level. So not at the tissue level, but in the tissue level, which is above the connective tissue, but in the junctional epithelium. 
And this is the ideal place for us to be working. If we can stay in that zone, then we're being protective to the body. Because it's like we've punctured the body, and now we want to stay away from that puncture and let it heal. So we'll suture it up, send the patient home, and we'll have them back in three months to do an intraoral scan. So this is Dr. Scott McLean, and it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. Anyway, I hope you can give this a try. The uh, hemisectional kind of flap, it's a punch on half of the flap, is really a cool way to do it because you're protecting tissue. And we want to save that tissue so that we can get it healing around that on one abutment and make it so that we get a really good seal around the top of the implant. All right, take care. Enjoy your time in dentistry.